Amongst all of the amazing results at the full major, we saw some teams exceed expectations. And I think we saw Secret do an amazing job uh, making top four as a team from South America. But we know South America are capable of making that top four, top eights. Uh, with Fury in the past. OCE is still yet to prove themselves since the modern format. They've never made a top eight since we've changed to the uh, year-long format. So we are still waiting for that moment and it almost happened here at the full major with Power who went early into that 2-1 position and then narrowly missed out on making top eight through their 3-2 game uh, to, to make it. So Torsos, Amphis, Fever, probably the strongest team we've seen in OCE since the Chief days, potentially, which Torsos was actually a part of. Uh, and I was very critical of these guys. I'll be very honest. I was critical of them because I didn't believe that they had what it takes to be international competition. Now, but Power actually stepped up a lot even beyond that, where they started just to play confidently. And that's the key to success on LAN is confidence. As we saw with Moist, structure is great, but at the end of the day, if you play confidently as individuals, that's probably more important than any kind of structure. They came through and they beat G2. So it's not just the fact that they beat G2, it's the fact they dominated G2 that I want to look into. So you can see here, uh, power versus G2, it was 4-1, 2-1, 1-0. So close as the game went on, but G2 just never got into the series. So this does bring questions around G2 as a team. What's going to happen next to them? Is there going to be changes for them in the future? Are they going to be a team that bounces back? You know, they were the winter major winners, the world finalists. So, you know, they've got a lot of potential, but uh, they seem to underperform quite frequently, um, having bad splits, bad majors, things like that. So we need to, to find out what's going on there. Um, but I think we can just look at the stats to start things off. So if we look straight away, you can see Fever and Amphis scoring loads of goals between them. And it actually Torsos is the assist man on this team, just in this series alone. It might be different across the board. Um, playing a little bit more of a supportive role. The more experienced of the players, the less mechanical. He's being the nuisance upfield, who's disrupting the play to give Fever and Amphis the ball, where they're being creative with their mechanics. You can see Atomic had a pretty good series. Uh, not a huge amount of uh, offense, but was quite defensively um, on board, getting lots of saves and getting lots of points. But just no offense coming out for G2, which is concerning. Uh, when we look at the boost amounts, one thing that OC typically struggles with is their boost management. You can see Fever's pretty good with his boost. Amphis uses quite a lot. Torsos keeps his boost not as high as you'd want. You know, these guys are playing quite fast and aggressive. Sort of typical of what you'd see with Oxygen, Liquid, those kind of teams. Trying to replicate that fast, chaotic playstyle, make the lobby uncomfortable for everybody, and they, they deal with the, the pressure well. Now, when we look at G2, they've got really good boost management. This is something they've worked on a lot when they first, but just before they picked up Atomic, boost management was all of their, the three players' weakest areas. Maybe Chicago had it down a little bit, but then when they picked up uh, Atomic, they all worked on it and improved it a lot. Uh, you can see good boost management here. So across the board, this is some of the best boost management we've seen in a while quite balanced positioning here no one crazily far forward or crazy far back chicago in front of the ball a little bit more i think all we got to do now is just watch some gameplay right the stats didn't show anything crazy odd they just showed a lack of offense for g2 and i think the power guys were just being a nuisance right they're just being annoying being aggro so this was the second game of the event so the swiss stage players are settling in a little bit a uh, lot of under expectation, no, no expectation, under, uh, what's the word? Underdog, I don't know, like, not expecting too much out of power, right? Um, so they, they'll be a little bit um, less respected, and I think G2 will have probably come into this with some kind of game plan, but probably not as thorough a game plan or as much expectation out of power as they would with some other teams. But you can just see here, power moving fast, moving confidently, hard to read. You don't really know what's going on here, whether they're gonna go, whether they're not gonna go. Like double committing all over the place. But similarly to what we said about Moist is, you don't have to play perfect Rocket League. You can play scrappy and chaotic and get success out of it. Um, it's so much about being efficient, being aggressive, being confident, mixing things up, being hard to read, that kind of thing. Because, like, looking at this power team, you wouldn't go, God, they're a team that just 3-0'd the world finalist. They're, they're, they're playing scrappy Rocket League.
But then equally, how are G2 dealing with the Scrappy Rocket League? They're, they're not able to read it. And they're getting punished in lots of situations for not being able to read it, you know? And you can see, like, the constant pressure from power onto the ball is making G2 feel a little bit uncomfortable. Great read by Fever there. So, like, they never feel like they've got time or space because power are playing so aggressively. And, like, they're, they're looking to intercept a lot. This is really good from power. It's chaotic, but it's good, you know? Like, you can see here, Torsos on the ball, forces Chicago to make a touch. Tomic going, baits him out. Torsos in the weirdest, most unorthodox position. Just a simple little touch, and it turns into a goal, right? This is really good play by Torsos. So we go back here. Torsos, low boost, good efficient movement. Being a nuisance. Fever intercepts well. That's really good play. And this is where people people look at these these top players who are losing their touch, right? And they're like, oh, you know, you're never going to see these players come back. And it's just they have to adapt. And like Torsos is showing here, like you don't have to do anything fancy. It's so much of it is about how you execute it. And like this is me talking about an Oceanian player, of course. I'm talking about an Oceanian player who didn't make top eight at a major and so on and so on. So you could say, okay, it does it does it's not the same as say, a North American or European player who's starting to fall off. But I think a lot of them just need to reevaluate the way the game works now and understand that if you don't have mechanics, you have to do other things. You know, you have to be fast. You have to be aggressive. You have to be efficient. You have to be a nuisance, right? And Torsos is doing that beautifully well here, right? Okay, that one wasn't so good. But, you know, still. You see how he instantly becomes... Oh, he got the goal as well. But, like... One thing I will say, though, is he does this. Lands with boost. And the, and the team knows what he's going to do, right? They have they have a game run. They have a strategy. It's good. Okay, we don't need to watch any more of this series. Actually, let's watch the last goal. Let's get that in. The garbage time goal. a little 1v1 play. Nothing crazy. Let's go into this next game. You can just see all the decisions they're making are fast. You see like the decision making process that they're going through is fast. Like they're snappy, right? Like I think one word I'll describe power's movement is it's snappy. Which does come across sometimes as panicky. But, like, I don't think they were panicking. I think they were just playing fast. See, like, there, right? Like, you see how decisive that that, that moment was for Amphis? Popped it up, went for the bump instantly, right? Like, it was it was like, what should I do, what should I, what should I do? It's like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to see if it works. If it doesn't work, we reset. If it does work, maybe we'll score a goal, you know? Watch G2's point of view. Whereas G2 look a bit hesitant, right? Like, watch JNAP's here. They just look a bit hesitant, right? And uncertain of what to do. I mean, you would be uncertain of what to do against this power team because like, I have no idea what, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at it from Chicago's point of view there. But still, it's like the... It's better to do stuff decisively than it is to do it slowly and indecisively. You know, like, this decision from Chicago was good. What was it here? Where he goes... 50-50, follow through, maybe get a bump, no bump available, follow through to the boost, spread out, JNAPS comes in, nice and decisive, able to take a shot, right? They need to do a bit more of that, where it's like, hey, I'm going to do this, play off of it, you you go in and I'll rotate back nice and fast. But you can see right here, look, 
Okay, to be fair, he's getting getting bumped. But you can see how like stacked up and uncertain they are with a lot of their decisions. And it's just because they're uncomfortable, right? They, they don't want to... Like, right there, you should just be challenging that, right? Like, just 50-50 that. Like, the worst case scenario is you 50-50 it, right? They just don't seem to be... They don't, I don't think they know what power are capable of a little bit. There's an element of what are, they, what are these guys doing, like... And because of that, they're, they're not thinking like they normally would. They're not thinking, I'm going to outplay a good player. They're just trying to work out, like, when are they going to make their mistake that we can punish? And, like, they're making mistakes all the time, but they're recovering them all the time, you know? So, like, you can't rely on mistakes here against power. Maybe that was their game plan. Perhaps they came in with a, let's just play safe and smart, and then when they make a mistake, we, we punish. It's not working out here. Because look, like there, they've made the mistake. But they recovered it, you know, somehow. Like, they've mechanics their way back into the game. Interesting. Because that what that looked like G2 following their game plan right there, right? Of, let's punish them for their mistakes. Yeah, I, I think we can all see what's going on here. Guys, summarize in chat what you see is going on in this game. In as few words as possible. To me, it's G2 playing safe, relying on mistakes. Mistakes not coming. And then for power, playing fast, confident, and chaotic, G2 can't read it. I so even like stuff like this. I know it's it's like looking at the micro details, right? Tom, it gives away the ball here. Like this is such an unorthodox way to hit the ball here, right? The way Amphis hits this ball here, so weird. And the fact that Fever is, is turned back in, like that's so weird. Like what they're doing is not normal rotations per se. But that's what we mentioned about Moist. It's like they don't rotate normally. They don't have a traditional rotation pattern, but it works in Rock League because if you do it efficiently, and confidently, and you communicate well enough, you can find yourself in unorthodox positions gaining value. Right? Like, Atomic right here. Look at this. Atomic does that outplay. Sees that interaction there. Oh, hello. Sees that interaction there. At no point did he think that ball was not going to be hit, right? Like, right here. Great play. Pops it over one. Sees here. Torsos and JNAP's going for the same ball. In every Rocket League situation he's probably experienced before, well, majority of them, this goes somewhere else other than where it did. Someone out of the two of those hits it. But in the end, both of them don't hit it. And look who's ready for this. Big old Amphis is coming in with all that speed and aggression. And he's like, oh, of course, everyone missed it. Makes sense to me. I play an OCE. Everyone misses an OCE. So he's covering more options with his movement. He's covering the... The scenarios that are less likely as well as the, the most likely scenario. And this is something people always complain about in Rocket League. Is they'll be like, oh, they're, they're playing so weird. They're doing these dumb things. They're doing this. They're doing that, right? Who's who's heard a friend say that? Who said that, right? Who said that about people where they've been like, oh, I can't play against this guy. They're just playing so stupid or they're playing so dumb or whatever it is, right? When they're your teammate, you kind of got some grounds for that because it's hard to play with someone who's playing playing a bit weird but you're like oh why did they go for that why did they do this why did they miss that why did they you know like all that kind of thing right now yes it's frustrating right it's frustrating it happens but the thing about the way power playing is that power are prepared for those moments they're covering as many options as possible right by moving around the pitch with speed by being prepared for a miss you know like two misses in a row and like, look at Amphis right here. Look at this moment right here. If we go from above, look at where Amphis is covering. If I draw where he is, if 
for you guys. This is Amphis down here. He's coming in with a lot of speed in this direction. He's covering a huge area, right? So if the ball does pop out, either this way off the interaction or that way, Amphis has it covered. If it doesn't pop out, Amphis has, has it covered in this area. Whereas you see Atomic's positioning, he's very committed to one option, right? And that's not, like, in this situation, it's not the wrong thing to do. It's the right thing to do. But, like, you can see Atomic right here. Fake. Pops over one. Commits that option over there. But Amphis is in a really good position to cover as many options as possible. Now, not every moment in Rocket League can you cover as many options as possible. Sometimes you do have to cheat into one option, which is uh, where you choose an option and commit to it and try and go for it. And then for power, they do that as well, but they also cover as the third and the second quite often. They cover as many options as possible. And it means that they they punish players for committing to one option because they, they present lots of different options. They cover lots of different options. And consequently throw teams off right so you see right here fever's positioning beautiful look at how many different options he covers atomic's positioning look how many options he covers one so he's predictable right let's look at on the wall right who's on the wall torsos no it's amphis on the wall amphis presents one option takes a different option, right? So he's taking different options every time, mixing it up. Great little 50-50 play. It's kind of a bit chaotic here. But you, you can kind of see the, the way power plays. They cover so much of the field. Because they're so chaotic and because their game plan is so chaotic, they have to. They have to keep their boost as much as possible. They have to cover as many different places as possible. You see these like fast, wide sweeping movements and the moment they don't get it, they let someone else go, right? That is such a good way to win a series as well. What a slottage as well. That's so good, right? Like, if you aren't looking at Amphis and Fever on LAN and thinking these are some of the best players at this event for stuff like that, like, they were outrageous. I mean, Torsos was great too. I think Power with a little bit more execution in those high-pressure moments. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them in a, in a top eight at some point this season. I was very critical of them online because I thought their play style was chaotic and hard to reproduce. But with the added experience of playing at LAN and the confidence that came with it into the stage, uh, uh, into the uh, Swiss and everything the whole time, they look to be confident and they actually have settled down a bit. It was a little bit chaotic online and they got away with it because the rest of the competition wasn't as good. Uh, the fact that they underperformed in a regional was it indicative of me of something similar to Oxygen, where you don't know which one's going to turn up on the day. But it seems like they've sort of honed their their craft a little bit. Um, and they've managed to perform at a level that is reproducible for them. Some little bits and bobs that will help them. Boost management, a little bit of um, execution in those moments where they need it. They're chaotic and, and rushed at times, but then if they can sort of take that deep breath before shooting, to use an example, you know, like just take a moment to reset before you take a shot rather than panic throwing yourself at it. Uh, they might might score some more of these goals because they're very close on a lot of occasions. But uh, they have a game plan that could work at future events. So watch out for these guys. And G2, they just need to have a big old reset. They need to go away, take a break, work out what's going wrong because they had a lot of holes and problems in the way they were playing right there. There's a lot of room to punish them based off of their habits of getting too close to the play, turning away, and then when they're turning away, they are vulnerable. So they, they need to read the play, be a bit more patient, sit a bit more spread out, and not just rush towards the play constantly. And then get punished when they have to turn around. Right, there we go.